Hey everyone, my name is Jeff and I'm the creator and primary maintainer of Roots and I'm here to give you a quick screencast and an introduction to how Roots works at a very basic level. Uh, if you check above, there's a good description of what exactly Roots is and why you might want to use it over other tools. So I'm not going to go over that again, you can just read that. And if you check below, you'll see that there are a number of additional videos on more advanced Roots concepts that I would encourage you to check out if you enjoyed this video. Um, so, to find the documentation for Roots, you can just go to Roots' website. It's going to be at roots.cx once we're live, but this is staging because this video is needed for us to go live. Um, you can see down at the bottom, uh, we have links to documentation, uh, articles, and a nice gallery of extensions to Roots that you should feel free to check out. Uh, in addition, Roots is an open source project. It's available on GitHub at github.com slash genius slash roots. Uh, right now I'm on this v3 branch, but by the time this video is released, we should be on master, which is super exciting. Um, and finally, before we get started, I just want to give some big props to Care Creative, my wonderful employer, who has sponsored this project for well over a year. Um, I say this not only because I owe them a huge thanks, but additionally because we use Roots at Carrot uh, for almost all of our projects, including this site itself, which is very large. Um, and I want to mention this to support the fact that Roots is something that we've made a major investment in that is already out in production behind several very large sites for high profile companies. And on top of that, that Roots is something that we've invested heavily in and we're committed to developing and maintaining. So Roots is not some new library that might go unmaintained in a couple months. It's something that has been in existence and it's been being worked on for multiple years uh, and you can trust that this is a library that will work hard to maintain and improve over time. Um, so with all that being said, let's jump right in and create a new Roots site. Uh, first, we need to install Roots. So if you don't have it yet, you can get Node at nodejs.org. Um, Roots is a Node tool and does require Node to run properly. Once you have Node, you should have access to npm from your command line. So you can just run npm install Roots and flag G. Roots does need to be installed globally because it uses a command line binary. So in order to have access to that, you need this global install. So that command should get you clear. I'm not going to run that because it takes a minute to install, and I already have it installed, uh, so I don't want to waste you guys' time. What I will do, however, is create a new root site so that you can see how this goes. So I'm going to just type roots new, and followed by the name of the site I want to make. In this case, I'm going to call it example, and uh, just go straight for it. So. Uh, as soon as this runs, it will ask me a couple of questions about the site. First, the name. I'm going to stick with the default of example because that makes sense to me. Uh, next, it will ask for a description. So I'll just put in a website for a screencast. Call it a day. And after that, it will uh, go through and install the dependencies, which might take a second, uh, but it shouldn't take too long. Okay, so dependencies are finished installing, and this dependency tree should be something familiar to you if you have worked with Node before. Um, and as it tells me here at the bottom, it has created a new project for us at the folder based on the name of the project. So let's just jump into that folder, and I'm going to open this up in Sublime, which is my uh, tool of choice for text editing. Um, so, there's a bunch of files you can see here that we will be going over um, between this video and the other videos, but I'm just going to jump right into the middle of things uh, so that we can get to shipping as quickly as possible because that's the way to do it these days. Uh, so, looking in this views file, we can see a couple of uh, Jade files here. Uh, Jade is the language that we use by default in Roots. However, don't be afraid if Jade is not your thing. It's very easy to replace Jade with another language, or in addition, add another language in addition to Jade. Um, so don't worry too much, this is just the default, and it can easily be changed if you want, and we'll demonstrate that in just a minute. Uh, so in here you can see just basic stuff, content block, uh, layout is referenced, we have a markdown block, which is a great feature of Jade, that allows you to write markdown in your views, which is great for content. 
and in the layout everything is just what you would expect uh, basic minimal head section we've got the block inserting here a couple of things going on here with extensions that we'll talk about later um, but more or less this is nothing too confusing um, so let's get right to it from our terminal I'm just gonna run roots watch this will compile our site and after it's finished compiling it will continue watching all of the files to see if we make any changes to it okay so here it is very very basic site and what we would expect based on this view now I'm just gonna go and make a quick change to this so that we can see the live reloading okay so you can see as soon as I save that uh, the page reloaded with our new content immediately which is pretty convenient uh, you probably saw a little quick flash of a black thing up here in the corner like that uh, this is a loader. The site compiled so fast that uh, it didn't even get to show the loader for very long because it's a small site. But with some larger sites, it can take a couple of seconds to compile, so it's nice to know that something is in progress while you're looking at the page. Uh, now I'm going to jump into the Assets folder and go into the CSS folder. Uh, and here you can see a couple of stylus files. Um, again, this is configurable. You can change it to any other CSS language that you would like or just pure CSS if that's your thing. Uh, stylus is just the default. Uh, so in here I'm just going to write some quick code. Change the paragraph to red and you can see that that updates immediately. Uh, pretty convenient. And the last thing that I want you to check out, there's no images right now, uh, but is the JavaScript. And here we have a copy script file. Once again, you can use regular JavaScript, you can use a Doge script, you can use whatever you need. We ha support a huge number of compiled JS languages. And this is just the basic, basic console log. Uh, so nothing surprising here. Now, back at our page, I'm going to open up the console and check out how this is looking. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff. Over here, you'll notice that we do have uh, source maps in place. So this does map back to the original stylus file. Uh, you could see that both on the default styles and additionally for the style that we just added, which is great. Uh, on top of that, we do have mapping for some of the more complex styles that are inserted through these, uh, sorry, these stylus functions right in here. Uh, these will map all the way back to the original sources um, in the libraries that they came from, which is great. Uh, additionally, uh, there is source mapping for CoffeeScript, which you can see here. It will map back to this original file. So this is pretty helpful in development um, in order to see where your code originally came from. All right, so let's say that Jade is not your thing. And uh, we want to switch it out for EJS because that's a language that's more understandable, a little bit more similar to HTML. Uh, and this will serve as a good example of how you can add an additional uh, compiled language to Roots uh, very easily. So we'll just create a new file. We'll save this up here called about.ejs. Imagine we're making an about page. And we'll just make a paragraph and say about page on here. Uh, very basic stuff. Now, in order to get this to compile correctly, we do need to install the EJS compiler. So I'm just going to run npm install EJS. Make sure to save that to your package.json file. It installs pretty quickly. And here you can see that it did install correctly, which is great. And with that in place, we can just run watch again. And as soon as our site compiles, uh, we will see that we can go to about.html, and here's our about page. So this compiled out correctly to HTML, which is just wonderful. Um, so that's how easy it is to add another language or replace a language in Roots. All you have to do is use that language's file extension and install the compiler, and Roots just takes care of everything else for you. Super straightforward. So finally, before we go, uh, I just want to show how we can deploy this site. Roots uses a tool called Ship which we made here at Carrot, which is a tool that deploys static files to various uh, hosts. So you can see this is a list of the hosts that we support, uh, and there are a couple that we're working on here. It's very easy to add a new deploy target to ship, and if there are any other ones that you're interested in, we would love to get a contribution. In addition, ship is not tied to roots in any way. This is an entirely independent tool that has both a command line and a JavaScript API that you can use. Um, so, if you're not interested in Roots for some strange reason, you can always use Ship if this is something that caught your attention. Now, the host that I'm going to use for this screencast is Netlify. 
Netlify is a uh, newer host. It's in beta right now, uh, but we've been using it pretty heavily here at Carrot, and it's been super fantastic for us so far. A very, very nice host for static sites, straightforward API, really quick, easy deployment. Um, you can see that it can also link to GitHub, and it will uh, compile your site for you when you push, which is known as continuous deployment. It does work correctly with roots, so you can put a root source on GitHub, and whenever you push a change to it, it will compile it to HTML and deploy it for you, which is very cool. They also have a really nice builds page that allows you to see any of the builds that you've done throughout history and roll back to any of them at any time, as well as preview any of them at a unique URL which is a fantastic capability. Finally, they have access control for other members that you can allow to deploy your site as well, kind of like Heroku. And they have notifications whenever a build fails or whenever your site is deployed, which can be very helpful. In addition to webhooks, which allow some really nice advanced functionality that we'll talk about in later videos. You can see here that Roots' main documentation website is already hosted on Netlify. So, that being said, I'm going to stop the watcher and I'm going to get this ready to deploy. All I have to do is type in roots deploy to Netlify. And as soon as I run this, it will ask me for some of my credentials. So first it will ask me for the name of the site that I want to deploy. For this one, I'm just going to do roots screencast example. And next it will ask for my Netlify access token. I can get this pretty easily under the OAuth app section. Uh, I'm going to revoke this one that I used for a previous tutorial, and I'll make a new token for roots. So here's my token. I will take this and just paste it right on in here. Now it will compile my site in production mode, and it will just deploy it right off to Netlify. You can see this all happened very quickly. Uh, now all I have to do is go to roots screencast. Oops example.netlify.com and you will see that our site exactly as it was uh, will pop up right here in addition to our about page which we can get at about.html or just go to about and that will render correctly as well which is really nice for static pages now another cool thing is that when we deploy, it automatically will build out our minified assets and it will fingerprint them and it will get rid of source maps and all the other development conveniences that we need and trade them off for speed. So here you can see this long fingerprinted file. Uh, on top of that, Netlify will also put our assets out to a CDN so that they're available even quicker. Uh, and you'll be shocked at how quickly root sites deploy to Netlify load. It's very, very, very quick and uh, it's absolutely fantastic. So that's it for this screencast. Uh, stick around and check out some of the other screencasts if you want to get more of a view into what some of these things that we didn't discuss are doing, like app.coffee, um, as well as see some more advanced methods of building cool types of sites with roots. Thanks so much for listening, and see you in the next screencast.